Are we all excited about day two here today? Yes. yes. And uh, first of all, thank you so much for, for inviting me to the summit. It's been an amazing experience. I think everybody would agree with me. And uh, I think what I want to do today is to actually, uh, you know, paint a picture of the future. And I think, you know, we're talking about AI and lots of different things that people talk, you know, and, and, you know, AI is something that is on lots of people's minds. And I just want to excite people about the possibilities uh, for using this kind of technology to actually further inclusion in things like justice. And, and I think that's the, that's, that's the focus of what I want to hope to achieve today. Um, I'm going to start with, you know, just last week, there has been a sea change in our understanding or the understanding of language in AI. And I don't know how many of you heard about the, uh, uh, the chat GPT. Okay. Okay. So therefore, I, so therefore, and I think that, you know, I, and I want to actually start with a couple of things to show what chat GPT can do. And that, that's really changed the way of how we look at, at language and this thing. So Saurabh over here uh, is going to actually ask, I'll first ask you to ask a kind of a, a metaphysical question and see what kind of an answer ChatGPT shows here. So can people see the screen? Yeah. Yes, okay. So the question was how many stars are there in the sky? Okay. And this is the answer that ChatGPT gives. To everybody can read, I don't want to read it out in case. We came to the second question. <laughs> so we're writing a poem on Brazil's loss to Croatia in the style of Shakespeare. So the thing is, this is exciting. And this is game changing. But then one thing we realize, ki every time, har bar jab ye, we make some progress, to kya hota hai? Digital divide gets increased. People who have access to these technologies move to the next level. And jo, jin ke paas ye technology nahi hai, wo rahe jate hai. And that is really the question, that when something comes like this, is it actually increasing? Uh, the uh, increasing the uh, the uh, um, uh, you know the division in society and are we going to become a society of we are already the society of haves and have nots are we going to be the society of digital haves and digital have nots and this is a question that 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 you know that that we have to think about carefully so this last week by the way chat gpt was released last week i recommend all of you to go and try it out but then what happened? We, and, and then you said, I was already supposed to speak and I was going to speak about something else. So, so I said, you know, how, you know, I, one of the things that I work on is actually work on Indian languages. And the, the focus is really for Indian languages is to get access to all information and services in Indian languages, in Indian languages and using the voice of the, so that people can speak in voice and get access to those things. So we said that's, that's actually one of the projects that I actually work on. And I said, I looked at this and I said, you know, wouldn't it be great if we took some of the things that we are doing there and make it work with ChatGPT and see that anybody in any language could be able to ask a question and get an answer in voice? Wouldn't that be wonderful? Can't we do that? Then, you know, I just, that was a rhetorical question. I said, TK, ye to ho sakta. Then I said, nahi ho sakta, baby. So therefore we had, you know, we had Saurabh here who's actually running stuff here and he's actually the one who actually within one day put together some things that combined voice in Indian languages and made it run with the chat GPT. <laughs> yeah. So we are going to see a demonstration of that. And I think it's poetic justice that, that, that sort of asked the first question. So we are introducing Jugal Bandi, which combines Bhashini. These are open source AI models in Indian languages. 
and make it work with chat gpt to allow people to answer questions in indian languages सबसे अच्छी बात यह है कि आप अपने बैंक या वित्तीय संस्थान से सीधे संपर्क करें और उनसे सहायता मांगें। वे आपको दोनों खातों से अपने पैसे निकालने का सबसे अच्छा तरीका पता लगाने में मदद करने में सक्षम होना चाहिए आप अपने खातों को एक में समेकित करने पर भी विचार कर सकते हैं जो आपके लिए फंड का प्रबंधन और निकासी को आसान बना सकता है so, Firstly, if you look at this, this is actually a WhatsApp interface. So, therefore, anybody who has access to WhatsApp could actually use this thing. And you've got an answer to a, a, a real question, you know. And this is really the power of combinatorial innovation. Something like ChatGPT came out. We had no idea that it was going to come out. We had these models which work on Indian languages and want to make things, and we combine those two things. within a matter of a day okay and that's we're not talking about within a matter of a day to actually produce something like this so, so thanks to sir so now what not now what we'll do is we'll uh, get some volunteers in the audience and they can try and uh, ask their questions so uh, smita here is is uh, is is working with this thing so therefore okay we're going to have people uh, work this let's वन अधिकार कानून के अंतर्गत व्यक्तिगत दावे का पट्टा कैसे मिल सकता है सो दर द आंसर फर्स्ट कम्स इन टेक्स्ट एंड देन वी आर कन्वर्टिंग इट टू ऑडियो yeah the audio takes a little time uh but i think the 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 interesting thing is that i would like to say what's happening here right when somebody speaks in hindi first we do speech recognition we are identifying the and convert it into text we take that text we translate it into english and then we are actually calling the chat gpt model the chat gpt model just returns a response in english we translate that back into hindi and convert that text into audio and that's what's happening oh. okay okay any volunteer marathi ka no 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 ask whatever you want to ask that's okay <laughs> the, we know that it doesn't work perfectly <laughs> प्रधानमंत्री आयुष्मान भारत योजने मध्ये मला किती पैसे मिळतील सो एनी मोर वॉलंटियर्स वॉट आस्क द क्वेश्चन वी हॅव हिंदी कनडा अँड मराठी अवेलेबल येस चंड मारुत रक्षणेगी सरकार योजने देशवलंबी बदल सामान्यवा सरकार हाली इूल सौकर्य कटू चंड मारुत पिणाम उत्तम बलपड़े जो आरंभिक एचरी व्यवस्थे स्थला योजने रचिव चंड मारुत बाधितर सरकार अनदान अथवा साल आर्थिक नेरबरिया सरकार चंड मारुत पिणाम विरद्ध रक्षा सहयस तंत्रज्ञान संशोधने अभिवृद्धली हूड़े Uh, with chat gpt is that sometimes it tends to give general answers rather than uh, very uh, specific answers but the point is not this that the point is not that we can start using this today but the point is to show that this can happen that excitement needs to be there that 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 you know and and and, and i think that what i if i can excite a few people here to come and say let's make this better 
then it's we are not talking decades we are not talking we're talking you know maybe maybe in a year or two these kinds of things can become common place for use of the citizens and i'm sure gpt itself is going to get better all our indian language technologies are going to get better and everybody will have access to information and services and that is really the thing that we want to and then what how that can impact uh, you know uh, the awareness of people and 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 the understanding of of things that they need to do so if i and, and i so what i want to say here is that you know we are going to talk today the talk was actually about open ai labs and open ai and what it is but see we are here this far and i think that we can actually make a difference here so if i can find a few people few few people to volunteer to help to do some of these kinds of things we can actually that this is the we are at the inflection point amazing things can happen and that's uh, that's what I'd like to to, to say. Uh, so I think maybe now it's demo time is uh, is uh, is over. Maybe we'll we'll talk a little bit about uh, OpenAI and 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 things things like that. So OpenAI is an initiative that that uh, that Agami uh, and others have started. Now it's maybe more than a year, right? More than a year now. And what is the core? The first thing that we need to do is that we need to have open data. Without open data, all of these things will again, you know, that's again the access question, right? And that's really the most important thing to allow justice solutions for everyone. And it needs to be open and collaborative. So by definition, OpenAI, everything that they do, at least that, that OpenAI itself does, is open source, available to anybody for using, which is, and, and by the way, many of the, even all the language things we talked about before, are also pure, are open source and available for anybody to use. And so the intent is that we, and we have to work together in a collaborative manner. So the point, one of the things, especially about AI is concerned, is that you don't want to have data silos. If different people think and they work separately and they work on their own set of data, you're not going to be able to achieve this. I mean, you look at what ChatGPT did, they actually crawled all the information available on the web and they, and they built these massive models using those kinds of things. And if we have to kind of, you know, uh, be part of that things, we have to work together. The concept of collaborative AI where the data is shared, where the models are shared, and that's actually the most important thing that we need to have. And I think that when, and many people can build things, right? I mean, so, I mean, I, I just said that we built this in, in, a, in a day, I mean, the, the solution we just showed you, there are, I'm sure there are people who can build much more wonderful things and better things. And we have to come back and look at all these and whatever components you have, you share it and there will be combinatorial innovation and people will actually uh, build things that are, that you couldn't imagine. I mean, I couldn't, I'm, I'm demoing this this week, a week ago, I couldn't imagine it. So therefore you see the speed at which things are changing. In this, in this world, and, and that's why it's such an exciting place to be. Tomorrow, you don't know what will happen and what, and, and therefore, and, but if we are not ready to embrace and to, to take these things and make it help us, nobody is going to solve our own problems except us. So that's the thing that is the core thing. So the technologies are there. How do you put it together to solve what you care about? And that's, that's really what's all about. So OpenAI has four core principles. One is it is open. So both in terms of data it is, and in terms of models, everything that is there is open. It is collaborative. We actually work with uh, students from, from law colleges. We work with uh, legal startups. It does, so we work with everybody and that's the collaboration is the key. And everything we put out is open and free for people to use. And that's the, that's the intent. And, but these are components. These are not necessary solutions by themselves. And then people can use it to compose and build larger things. The other thing, of course, with AI is, is the necessary necessity for transparency. You have to be transparent about what data, how is it being used, what, how, and the, the, the fundamental thing is some of these things have to be open. It's, it's a challenge. It's not always easy to be fully transparent, but transparency must be a core principle upon which you base. And then of course it needs to be inclusive, right? And that's one of the things that I want to make sure is that inclusion needs to be a core principle that how can maximum people benefit from what we are trying to do. And that's, and that's something that, that you, so those are the core principles of OpenAI. And 
OpenAI itself, you know, has we have a number of different things. We work with students, right? Uh, as part of uh, as part of the student community, we work with uh, with startups and other people as the collaborative community. We have learning circles where people come and exchange ideas, uh, and 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 also we have uh, you know MOOCs and hackathons uh, that OpenAI has has organized. Last year there was a there was a, hack, a hackathon and at least two or three MOOCs that that OpenAI has put out. And at the top, of course. We are working on uh, benchmarks on how to really solve our kinds of problems. So therefore, basically, Indian uh, you know benchmarks so that people can actually see how good whatever the solution they're developing is. Uh, open data is, I would say, the number one focus of what we want to make sure we need to get the data open. Every kind of data. I'm saying that whether it is you know whether it's things from uh, high courts or district courts or. Um, or it is FIRs or, or tribunals or all of this data. This is public data. We need to have it open. We need to have it. Be, and that's one of the things that we'll make, you know, we'll, we'll put all our efforts. Of course, this is not, uh, it is beyond our pay grade to say <laughs> whether we can do it or not. But uh, the, 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 uh, that's something that has to be one of the core driving principles. And of course, the intent is to actually uh, let no one behind, and I think that's that's that that, that is the intent with which uh, OpenAI has been created. And uh, moving on to the last slide, which is basically uh, we are launching OpenAI Labs, which is actually a hybrid makerspace where people can learn, build, and share. And this is really kind of the in the in the end, we want startups and other people to come and become part of this, and the startups who have. Uh, you know, who actually bring their specific expertise in different areas. But of course, we have people who uh, are excited about technology like me, or people who actually know stuff about the legal process and grassroots context. And I think the mentorship, that is a very unique thing. Because this is not, AI is of course a general thing, but you know, we want to really have something that focuses people who want to solve problems in this domain using this thing. And in addition to that, People who become part of part of these labs will get access to cloud credits and access to developer tools and a number of different things that help them put together solutions much more in a, in a much shorter time and that, that are much more effective and useful for society. So with this, I'm actually not the kind of person who open things, but, uh, <laughs> but, but somehow <laughs> I've been conned into this. So, <laughs> so with this, we uh, launch the Open AI Labs. So, <laughs> so applications, yeah. So applications are open for people uh, to uh, uh, applications are open for people to uh, to supply to become part of these labs. And uh, you know there are there's information about the various. In fact, there are going to be sessions today. Uh, where first there is going to be a session which is actually going to be a mini uh, OpenAI lab today, so you get a feel for the kind of uh, things. And this is the entire OpenAI team out there. And uh, and of course uh, we also uh, you know uh, we'll also be talking about what our, our experience with the hackathon uh, that happened uh, earlier this year and the kinds of things that people built. But I'm saying that you know. It's, it's you, ain't, you ain't seen nothing yet because new things are coming in. And as they come in, you really see how things can actually accelerate in this. Sense. So hopefully, as well as I actually have at least, if people understand at least my excitement that, <laughs> that something exciting can happen here. And uh, so thank you. Thank you for... for <laughs>